Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Periodontal dressing, it's important to have a systematic approach so that one can be as easy on the patient as possible while efficiently removing the dressing material. On the bracket table is a conventional setup of instruments that are used when removing a dressing and also if there are sutures involved, removing of the sutures. On the left side of the bracket table where you can see my finger pointing are two dampened dishes. One has 4% liquid xylocaine, the other has pumice with 2% fluoride used as the liquid. Next is a mouth mirror, a Wesco number one scaler. It's like a hoe, a modified hoe that is very rigid. A sickle explorer, two cotton pliers, suture shears for removing sutures, and a toothbrush for instructions in oral hygiene after the dressing has been removed. We'll now proceed interorally, and the dressing on Marion's mouth is in the upper left-hand quadrant around the back three teeth, the second bicuspid and the two molars. Wesco. When removing a dressing of this type, it's important, like I said, to have a rigid instrument and that's what this Wesco scaler is. It's a very rigid instrument. That the very tip of it will be placed underneath a margin of the dressing. And this tip then will be worked against the dressing to remove the dressing away from the surgerized area and away from the teeth. Now you can see how I'm pushing this up and it looks like this is going to come out very easy. It's coming out in a way and the assistant then will take a hold of the dressing material and I'll make sure that it's loose in the distal portion and you can see how the whole dressing material will come out. In this case it came out in one solid piece from the buccal surface. Now notice that there is some material, white material, underneath that dressing and you can see how I'll move some of this off that gingival tissue with the scaler very gently just to show you what's underneath and this is very common to see this type of material underneath a dressing after it's been there for six days as this dressing has been. The removal of the dressing on the lingual side is very similar to the buccal surface. The rigid end of the scaler is placed underneath the margin of the dressing and it is teased very slowly away from the surgerized area, the teeth, and slightly occlusally. It appears that this lingual dressing is going to come out like the buccal did very easily all in one piece. As you can see now how this is coming out and the assistant will remove the dressing the rest of the way. The next step is to take the sickle explorer and check in approximately to see if there is any material left in between the teeth. Between the bicuspid there's nothing, between the bicuspid and molar there's nothing. Between the molars there is a little dressing material left and the assistant now will pick that up after it's been shoved out from between the teeth. Can you see that, darling? On the distal side, there's no dressing either. The next step is to use a scaler again to remove any bits of dressing material that have adhered to the coronal portions of the teeth. And this is very similar to removing stain on the crowns of teeth. I'll just simply go around these teeth. On this molar, there is some material, dressing material still there, that I'll remove now in a scaling manner, where I'll go up near the gum and then move the instrument cronally. So I'm actually scaling over the crowns of the teeth to remove any excess dressing material. On the mesialis molar there's some more dressing material there that I'll remove. I'll go right on around these teeth and remove any of this excess material. Now on the distal side it's not visible what I'll be doing. On the lingual you probably won't be able to see, but it's the same thing as was just carried out on the buccal surface. Occasionally when you remove dressing material from in between the teeth 
as we had to between the molars, there will be a little hemorrhaging as is now going on between the two molars, but this is something that doesn't last long. Next procedure is to apply xylocaine over the area. And also at the same time this 4% liquid xylocaine is being applied, the cotton ball is used to wipe off loose soft debris from the teeth and from the gingival tissues to debride the area and to clean it up a little bit. Two, three percent hydrogen peroxide mixed with half warm water will now be used to rinse the mouth to further assist in removing the debris from around the teeth. You can go ahead, Marianne, and take the cup there. Take a little mouthful and rinse it around that area. Just swish it around, then Darlene will evacuate it for you. After the mouth is rinsed with the hydrogen peroxide, then a warm solution of plain water is used to get rid of the hydrogen peroxide and the taste of the xylocaine. One of the reasons for using the xylocaine is that since there was a gingivectomy performed in this area and there will have to be another dressing place, it's a little more comfortable on the tissues to have the surface area slightly anesthetized with a topical anesthetic. When evacuating like this, Darlene is always careful of the surgerized area because it is a little uncomfortable at first. I'll double check the area, explore, to make sure that everything is coming along satisfactorily and also to make sure that the soft debris is removed from around those teeth and approximately. And this will be carried out with a sickle explorer. I'm gonna... I'm gonna tissue that. Mm -hmm. I also checked to make sure that I removed all the dressing material from the crowns of the teeth, any that might adhere. Frequently at this time, the teeth are polished with pumice to further clean them. And we're going to do that now. And it is possible also, if the tissues are too tender right after removal of a dressing, to do this polishing a week or two later when the tissues have healed more. It's very important for the final and thorough healing of an area that the debris material be removed and that area be as clean as possible. Move the foot control over here, darling. So this is just a rubber cup with pumice. As I said earlier, there is sodium fluoride in this rubber, in the pumice. So we'll gently polish these teeth and only go close to the gingival tissues where surgery has been carried out because we don't want to unnecessarily irritate this newly epithelializing area where the gingivectomy was performed. Did the, after doing the buckle, we'll just do the lingual surface. And you might not be able to see in the mirror what's going on here, but it's just the same procedure, just a simple polishing of the teeth always making sure that the rubber cup doesn't traumatize the wound area. Polish occlusal surfaces also. Darlene will now rinse out this area to remove the pumice.
after a dressing has been removed and the patient's going to be dismissed with no dressing in the mouth, they should be taught how to brush their teeth differently than what they have before. So we're going to show the patient now how to use this rubber tip. Can you hand the mirror to the patient, Darlene? You can watch with the mirror now, Marion. I want you to use this rubber tip now in between the teeth. And at first you use it gently. You can place this rubber tip in between the teeth, like this, and then slowly move it around, pressing against the teeth and the gums in just a gentle circular motion. Then you can come down and out, so if there is any debris in there, you can remove it. So you're gently cleaning in between these teeth with this rubber tip, which has minimal potential for causing any damage to the, to the heating area. Now notice I'm going in between the next two teeth, and I'll point this rubber tip in, and just move it around gently. See how it goes around in a circle like that, Marion? Mm -hmm. Then I'll come down and out, and do it several times to make sure that any debris that's in there is removed. I'll go back between the next two teeth now, Marion. Place it in, and again, work it around in a gentle motion, then come down and out. Now as the week goes by, this next week, you can do this more vigorously every day. On the inside, it's the same procedure. And after approximately a week, you can start using dental floss in between the teeth. Now notice on the inside, we're doing the same thing. Placing this rubber tip in between, working it around gently, going on back in between the molars to clean out any debris. It's too tender at first to use dental floss in that area. I'll have you demonstrate this to me in just a minute. Next is how to use these bristles. Now on the top side of the teeth, you brush the same way you were taught before, Marion. I want you to use just a short jiggly movement on the top side or the biting side of the teeth. However, when you get next to the gums, this is different now. This brush should be placed in the mouth and see how those bristles are pointed down towards the crowns of the teeth? It's about a 45 degree angle. So the sides of the bristles of the toothbrush are next to the gums. The ends of the bristles are pointed at the teeth. Then the brush is vibrated gently. So we're cleaning the gums gently and cleaning the teeth. Now I'll move back a little bit further and do the same thing. Vibrate the toothbrush back and forth with the sides of the bristles against the surgerized area, the healing area, and the end of the bristles point at the teeth. And I'll come down and out of there. I'll go back on that last tooth. You should do this at least three or four times in each area to clean those well. Now on the inside, the direction of the bristles is the same. However, you have to hold your toothbrush a little differently in here, Marion. Notice how back in here now, I'm using just the end of the bristles. But again, the sides of the bristles of the toothbrush are laying against the surgerized healing area. The ends of the bristles are pointed at the teeth. Then the toothbrush is vibrated. So this gently cleanses the area against the gingival tissues and the crowns of the teeth. So you should, as gently as possible, but as thoroughly as possible, clean the gums and teeth after a dressing has been removed. And notice how I move along from one area to the next, but it's the same procedure in each area. I lay the bristles in there, vibrate gently, and then just come down towards the crowns of the teeth a little bit. And it's always advisable to double cover. If you notice, Mary and I started in the back tooth, and then I came forward, then I'm going right back to where I came from. So I double cover those areas. So that's brushing both inside and outside. Now I'd like to have you put that mirror in your left hand and take this toothbrush. And can you show me now on the outside, lay the sides of bristles, that's right. Point the ends of the bristles at the crown and vibrate gently. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. Mm-hmm. Just to change the position slightly, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Do it some more. Now this is a little bit awkward when you're laying down. If you do this well when you're laying down and you're standing up, it'll be even a little easier for you than what it is now. Let's see you try on the inside in a couple of places just to, there you have, that's right, the end of the bristles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And vibrate gently. Very good. You're a fine patient. If you notice, I'm watching all the time to make sure that she is doing it 
in an acceptable manner. That she's cleaning gently but as thoroughly as possible. And we're very fortunate in having somebody that's performing very well for us. Very good. Now let's see you try the rubber tip. The rubber tip goes right straight in horizontally from the side. Mm -hmm. Right straight in. Just rotate it around. That's right. Very good. Now during this next week, Marion, as indicated before, you should gradually increase your brushing vigor as the days go by. As it's more comfortable, brush more vigorously. After approximately a week, it should heal enough that you can then use dental floss and toothbrush in the manner that you were originally taught. You should gradually start eating harder foods every day and feel your way along. If what you eat doesn't hurt, go ahead and consume it. And gradually try things a little bit harder. And again, after a period of about a week, you should be able to eat most any food that you could eat prior to the time any periodontal surgery was carried out in your mouth. You should expect that the soreness in the gum tissues will subside in the next few days to a week, but you might have some tenderness on the roots of the teeth. And this tenderness might persist for weeks or even months, but it should, with time, slowly subside. This completes the removal of a periodontal dressing and the instructions that are given to a patient. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.